Thank you. I'm not here to talk about medical research today. Today, I want to tell you about a new way to get clean water. Well, when we're thinking about clean water, being here in North America, uh, we are blessed with state-of-the-art facilities. Um, we have, there's a picture here that shows you the, the, uh, the shot of Waterloo Municipal Water Treatment Center. And it has state-of-the-art facilities that help us to clean the water, making sure the water that we drink is, uh, is safe, is free of microorganisms, free of pathogens, free of heavy metals, and as well as free of chemical compounds. And what I want to talk about today is finding a technology um, that can fight all these water pollutions, but without all of these state-of-the-art technologies. And what it really inspired us here in the uh, University of Waterloo is to think about how do we apply clean water to everybody? And a choice and a chance for everyone on this planet to have the ability to enjoy a good, cold, refreshing water that all of us we enjoy every single day. The technology that we want to go push into finds the water for the places where people finding fresh water is a day-to-day -day struggle. And can we invent a technology uh, that can help us to clean water, making sure the water is clean, uh, clean enough to drink in places where the government, they just don't have enough resources to enforce standards uh, to protect this water safety. And, and, and also for the places where there's just not enough water to, to design an economically feasible water treatment facility, um, places that have no electricity. What about finding a new technology and finding a way to help us develop water treatments that water treatment can be used every single day by everyone and it's cheap enough that can be used every single day. The, way, the reason I kept saying every single day is we see a lot of these water treatment technologies that we think is quite affordable, but it's only affordable to us. It's not affordable, it's just astronomically expensive for the rest part of the world. And also, how do we develop something that can be used over and over again? You know, we can send uh, facilities, we can send uh, equipments and tools that can be sent to these places and do water treatment. But how long can it last? And we want to find something that's sustainable, something that can last not just for weeks or months. How about years? And something that could be so easy to be done and so easy to be used that we don't need a fancy step-by-step uh, -step instructions. Go to page five to know how to do maintenance and do repair. Something that everybody can use. And most important, we want to find something that can be easily distributed and dispersed and to be used by people. You know, something that doesn't require that we can develop here has to be shipped by a box. So can, we buy, can we do something small and effective that everybody can use and, and they can use it at their facility? Something that is so small that we can send through a letter sized envelope. Mm -hmm. And maybe not just a one letter sized envelope to one single person. How about we can send enough materials in the package of one single letter sized envelope to contain enough packaging materials to help 10 people in a family, each of them getting fresh water that they need it. This is a kind of a work and a motivation that, that um, motivates us to develop new technologies. And when it comes down to engineering, what we're designing is something with astronomical level of difficulties. We can't use electricity. We can't use existing infrastructures. We can't use something that's expensive. If something has to be dirt cheap, cheap enough that it costs almost nothing. It has to be easy enough to be used. It can't have instructions and, and pages and pages of safety warnings. It just has to be something easy, intuitive, so that nobody needs to read how to use them, and how to maintain them, and, um, and, and, and care of them. And more importantly, when we have something like this in our hands and give it to uh, the people who can really use them, how many times can we use them? Can we use them? every single time and every day for years to come. And this is sort of the obstacles that we wanted to overcome. So we wanted to design something that's cheap enough, uh, robust enough, and we can design them simple enough that can be used all the time. And we found this a solution to go to push this technology forward based on nanotechnology. 
Exactly what is nanotechnology? I think a lot of us know. It basically means designing and, ma and manipulating materials and, and, and making devices at a nanometer scale. And how small is a nanometer? Well, if you take a, a, a piece of our hair, divide it 80,000 times, well, that's one nanometer. We take a grain of salt, uh, there's nanometer worth or nanometer size particles, it's almost a trillion. So, nanometers is very small. One fascinating aspect of this nano phenomena is that by the time we take a material going from a bulk phase down to the nanometer size, the fascinating things happen. And one of them is that they can absorb light, they transmit light and illuminate differently just by simply changing the size. So you don't have to t manipulate a composition of matter. The same material, by, control by controlling the size, you can make them to different colors. So they're really, really small and they can do a whole lot of things. The other aspect of nano that makes it so fascinating is because they're so small, the total surface to volume ratio becomes infinitely large. How large is it? Can you imagine a one centimeter cube in my hand, pinched between my two fingers? And within that, if you're using nanometers compiling this little cube, that's more than an acre of space. Think about it a different way. One sugar cube, and in this sugar cube contains glucose. And glucose is one nanometer uh, around that size as, as a composition. There's enough surface area to cover our basketball court here in the University of Waterloo Gymnasium 14 times. That's how big a surface is. So now, what nanotechnology offers us is the ability to use something small, something light, providing vast surface and so efficient that doesn't need to be uh, transported with bulk materials. And when you combine something that's so reactive and such a large surface, what you're getting is something that's becoming robust and, and highly reactive. And so now we have a technology using nanomaterials that can potentially use to react and treat water. But then again, we go back to our constraint. What are the uh, ways that we can trigger this reaction without any facilities, without any electricities? Well, Mother Nature. What if we're harvesting sunlight, solar light, just a light around us? That's way more accessible than getting electricity in some of these regions. So the technology that we're building is inspired by using Mother Nature's, Mother Nature's energy, so using solar light, combining with nanotechnology with high reactive surface, vast surface, small material needed, and, and just tiny bit of material to produce a big impact. And so that really becomes the, uh, uh, the, the, the basics on how we're going forward. And here's a little bit of science on how this really works. We need a, a light source. Um, it could be a light bulb, it could be a light uh, from, from solar energy that can be harvested on the surface of this nanomaterial, which can catalyze a wide variety of reaction. And so the basic ingredient to make a water clean has three main components. One, light. Two, this material, a material that's cheap enough to, to be used all the time. And three, water. That's it. We're not introducing anything else, and we're simply making them more uh, easily implantable. And the reason this works is a whole science between, behind photocatalysis that in this whole reaction, it generates a lots and lots of free radicals, which is reactive enough to catalyze uh, the uh, uh, breaking down of chemical compounds. The reaction is strong enough to kill up pathogens, and it can do all kinds of wonderful things. To make this material, one of the biggest constraints is what we're supposed to put in this material to make it last longer. So we have material that can treat water, but what if, how many times can we do this? What if we can ju just introduce enough materials in water uh, to treat it? And what are we gonna do with that material afterwards? Are we gonna supposed to drink it? Well, first, we have to take it out. And second is, if we can take it out, we can do it fast enough and efficient enough, then we can redeploy these, these, these chemicals uh, back into the water to do the treatment and leaving no trace behind so we can get a clean water. And to do this, it sounds really complicated, but to do it, um, the, the design rationales really involve three components. The first is a magnetic core. We have full of magnetic resources on our planet. It's probably one of the cheapest commodities that we can buy. Um, not so rare that the, uh, uh, the magnets, uh, 
magnetic materials, iron-based materials. They're everywhere. And what we have to do is to make them small enough into these nanomaterial size so they can offer us this vast surface areas that we always enjoyed. And to make sure that these magnets don't corrode and they can last for a long time, they can be used repeatedly, um, we coated this magnetic material uh, layer with a layer of glass, silica. So this essentially protects the cores from all the reactions from the outside, protect, uh, pro prolonging the longevity of these materials, ensuring they can be used over and over again. And then on top of this, we coated our material with this light activating surface um, that, that can be responsive in the, present, in, the, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the presence of light. And so now we have these three components, and in, with, with these three components, uh, we can use the water for treatment. We have a component to do, take, these, take these components out of water, um, and we have also the layer that protects this, this reactivity that can, be, that can be done over and over again. So some of you might ask, how many times can we do this? Or how long can we do this? Well, these are really two big important questions. First, how many times can we do this? Well, it turns out we can do them numbers and numbers of times. And the reason all I have to do is to thank to this little insulation layer that protects the magnet um, from, uh, from being corroded so it can work all the time. But the trick here is that if you make the magnet too big, they become instantly fouled, meaning they can crash in the water right away. They're too big. So this is where nanotechnology comes into it at its finest, that is small enough that it can help these particles suspend and do the treatment but they're strong enough they can be pulled out by the water, uh, from the water right away. The second part is, now that we know that it can be reused, um, how efficient is this? Well, we can, we can use this surface as almost a vast surface to do the treatment. And what we find is that if we use it 10, 50, 100 times, the efficiency gradually uh, loses its, 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 uh, its ability to do it quickly. And so we need to find a way to regenerate them. Again, we don't have a whole lot of resources to play with. And again, we go back to the drawing board. Because the surface is so reactive to the light, all we have to do is place these particles under light, irradiated by light. And that, the particle surface can regenerate itself and go right back to work and, and be able to, uh, uh, to be used uh, over and over again. So we think this is easy enough. We don't need a whole lot of process. We don't need a whole lot of equipment. All we need is these particles and a bit of light. And that's sufficient enough to help us clean the water. Now, how fast can we do this? Well, it turns out it can be done in minutes. Here, I show a video. and We do this almost every single day. And we do this quite repeatedly. So what you're seeing here is that after the water treatment is finished, and this takes a, takes a little bit of time, a few minutes, and then we can collect these particles. All we have to do is place under a magnet, next to a magnet, um, the particles that are using to use to eradicate these uh, contaminant species um, are being gradually pulled away. So using nanoparticles, we have a vast surface area. We don't need a whole lot of materials, but we can occupy a huge volume of water, produce very robust reactions, treat them quickly, and they can be retrieved quickly. And then the reaction is fast enough that it can treat all kinds of, almost all kinds of uh, contaminants, organic compounds, pathogens. So we think that this might be a really good way to go forward. Now, there's one more caveat in here. So we talked about chemical contaminants. Uh, we talked about pathogens. One of the things that we haven't talked about are the heavy metals. And those are something that really bothers us. How are we going to use this reaction to do? Well, because they're nanomaterials, they're small enough. Again, because they have this, such huge surface area, we can make absorbents deposit onto these composites that not only they can do treatment, but they can do remediation or to take, take these uh, heavy metals, suck them onto the surface, and remove them from the drinking water facility. So now we, we can think about all the components that we have. We need light, we need water, and a, just a tiny bit of this particles that we can do all these magical treatments on water. Going back to the original constraint that we talked about, can we send this distribute them to a mass amount of population? The answer is yes, we can. How about we package them into a package the size of a tea bag? They could be shipped by a letter size envelope, and they can be shipping multiple bags of this in an envelope anywhere. We don't need a box to send them. We could, 
but they're small enough they can be packaged lightly, and they can be sent to a vast number of recipients. It's the same way that we're treating, we're, we're getting a cup of tea using these tea bags. We can then dip these, these, these bag, the small little bags into water reservoirs, into jars, jugs, anything that people store water, and then use these harvest the sunlight to help us treat water. So, in this technology, we think that it's easy enough to be used. We don't need to write a whole lot of instructions on how to use them. The biggest and the most complicated part is how do you make these materials? And throughout this talk, how many times did I say the word nano? You might wonder, where are we gonna get all these people to help us bring this into a reality? Where are we gonna get a bunch of people who are so dedicated and focused on nanotechnology and focused on water research? Well, here in Waterloo, we have the world's largest undergraduate and graduate education at the University of Waterloo for nanotechnology engineering. Um, and we're dedicated to, to uh, advance these technology forward. It is my great privilege to work with a lot of these students, young, bright students, who come up with these ideas and pushing the boundaries of nanotechnology and not just making the fundamental discoveries, but making the fundamental discoveries into applied research that can be useful, not just by us, but almost everybody. And with this, I believe that we have enough resources, and now we have the cost to push this work forward. It's simple, it's easy, it's small, it's light, and it's cheap. And with this, we are part of the group of, of many, many professors, um, not just within the University of Waterloo, but across Canada, that are forming these networks to jointly tackle these problems together. And I welcome all of you, if you're interested, if you're thinking this is a good cause to go forward, if you want to learn more about nanotechnology, learning more about how to utilize these harvesting high energy, high uh, efficiency materials to treat water, this is really the right place to be. Thank you very much for your help.